Um, I want to welcome Noah Barkley, who's here today to answer questions that readers have sent in via Twitter. So our first question inward, uh, this comes from Louisa McPherson, uh, and the question is, where has been your favourite place to visit in the UK so far? Wow, that's a tough one because, I mean, we've been to so many places and, and a lot of them were just absolutely wonderful. Um, I guess I, ha I have a, one particular favourite so far, and that was going to um, Stirling in Scotland. To the I hadn't, I'd never been to the Bloody Scotland Crime Festival before. And so that was a first, and we had this just a spectacular event on uh, Sunday. It was a closing event. And it's wonderful questions from, I think it was Jenny Brown, who was a great interviewer, and we had all these great questions from the audience. And it was just, I think it's one of the, not maybe not not just the best event that I think we did on this on this tour that we did of, of Ireland and England and, and Northern Ireland. But I think it's one of the top three events I have ever done. It was just absolutely terrific. Like the feeling from the audience and everything like that, it was, it was just really terrific. Um, our second question comes from Julia Piddock, and she asks, how did you come up with the place Promise Falls? Is it based on anywhere you know? Promise Falls is, well, it is, it is, a, it is a kind of made up town. It's in upstate New York, and I have a rough sense geographically of where it is. It's sort of north of Albany, and um, but it's, if it's based on anywhere, I mean, it's based pretty much out of my, uh, my imagination. But if it's based on anywhere, it might be Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, where I went to university, to Trent, and where I had my first newspaper job at the Peterborough Examiner for a couple of years. And I think it's a bit like that uh, in terms of size and, and so forth. So if it's based on anywhere, I think it's probably based on, on Peterborough. Maybe even, I also picture sometimes there's a lovely town in Ontario in Canada called Port Hope. And sometimes I picture that downtown as Promise Falls. That leads us to another question sent in by Nancy Parks, who asks, why are your stories set in the United States? Canada can have interesting places, and because you live in Canada, it seems strange to me. Well, uh, my first response would be that if I had all these people doing these terribly nasty things, and you find out that they were Canadian, you wouldn't believe it, because we're just too nice. Like, we just wouldn't do these kinds of things. So I think it's more believable and uh, that it's a U.S. setting. And, and I just kind of like the setting. I mean, the thing is, I was born in the U.S. and, um, and uh, moved to Canada when I was just turning four. My parents moved to Canada. I did, didn't do it alone. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the books that aren't set in Promise Falls are set in Milford, Connecticut, which is where my aunts lived. My two aunts, my father's two sisters, to whom I went to visit every year you know, until they passed away. And so I had a very strong sense of that place. And I thought it was perfect. Also, uh, there's, in some of the books, there's been a strong kind of underlying theme about the economy and about the economy going in a real tailspin. And the the economy, the, the sort of downturn in the economy that hit very hard in the mid 2000s, hit much harder in the US than it did in Canada, like the bank collapse, the mortgages and all that sort of thing. That didn't happen in Canada. Uh, we had much better banking rules and regulations. So for that and a variety of reasons, that seemed to be the perfect place to put it. Amy Davis asks, who would you cast as David Harwood in a TV adaptation of Broken Promise? Who would I cast as David Harwood? I've never been asked that and I've never thought about it. And the, and the, oh, the first person that pops into my head is Kyle Chandler. I don't know who who played coat the coach in Friday Night Lights. He's in a fantastic uh, Netflix series called Bloodline. Although I mean I I don't know why I instantly picture him. Although I think maybe he's he's too tough. I mean like he's got and and David I think is not as a really tough guy. Uh, so I don't know if Chandler be right, but I just I just really like him. I think he's a great actor, and uh, I think he would be. You know, it's funny, now that I think about it, I mean, one of the other characters in some of my other books and a character in the next book that I write, that I, that's coming out is Cal Weaver, the private detective. I can see Kyle Chandler being him. I think he's just amazing. Next, we have a question from Jane Muirhead, who asks, if you could kill off any modern day crime writer, who, why, and how? If I could kill off any modern day crime writer, who would it be? The list is very long. 
because there are so many fantastic crime writers out there who are cluttering things up and keeping the rest of us sometimes from getting to number one. So I think I'd, we probably have to start with Lee Child. Uh, Mark Billingham would be very high on the list I have to get rid of Mark. Uh, Michael Robotham, I probably want him to be gone. Uh, not only, these are, these are all authors who I admire tremendously. So it's sad to think that I have to get rid of them, but you know, you do, you do what you have to do. Now I have a question from Colin Wright, who I think attended your Belfast event. Mm -hmm. He asks, well, he says, I was surprised that you mentioned tonight that Cross Your Eyes was your best work yet. Is there any particular reason? Well, I, I'm particularly fond of the novel Trust Your Eyes, which came out, I guess that was two years ago or three years ago that came out. And uh, Trust Your Eyes, for those who haven't read it, is about a guy who's obsessed with a Google Street View-like website that allows you to travel the world virtually, just staying at home and you can go everywhere. And I really like that book for two reasons. One, um, I think it's one of the best concepts I ever had. It's kind of updated rear window in a lot of ways. And, and also what's at the core of that story is a relationship between two brothers. And that's a, a kind of relationship that I'd never done in a book before. And it's, I think it's at the real heart of that book. And I think that has a lot to do with why I think it's my favorite. Martin Lloyd asks, do you think you'll ever experiment with a completely different genre? If so, what would interest you? Another genre, I don't know. I think, um, I do think I'd like to write some, I, I've started on a project for uh, like a younger audience, like YA or ages sort of nine to 13. So I, I actually am working on that now. Um, so that's, uh, I, it's, it's kind of a, a little bit, it's, it's thrillerish, but it's aimed at a different audience. So that's maybe, you know, sort of the same genre, but aiming, aiming for different groups. So there is that. And I actually have this, I was talking about this last night in, um, in Belfast at the No Alibis bookstore, uh, that I have this I have this really neat idea for a horror novel, and, and um, which isn't really my thing to do, but I have this really cool idea. And I'm not sure any of my publishers want it, because they're just sort of like, look, listen, do your thrillers, everybody loves thrillers, don't mix, don't confuse the audience. So, I mean, maybe someday I'll, I'll knock that one off and see if anybody wants to read it. Clay, sorry, Craig Sinclair asks, what are the best Lou Arch novels to start off with? Yeah, I was a huge, and still am, a huge fan of the Lou Archer novels. Lou Archer is the detective created by the late writer Ross MacDonald. And, um, you know, I think probably the single best Lou Archer novel by Ross McDonald was The Chill. But there are others that I've really enjoyed. And, and I was trying to think of my favorites, and I ended up just kind of starting to list all of them. Uh, you know, The Underground Man is a really good book. The Galton Case, The Doomsters. I really like Sleeping Beauty. Um, the Witcherly Woman is a wonderful book. The Zebra Striped Hearse. I mean, now I'm basically listing all of them. But um, I just think they're, and they kind of, they kind of evolve, the early ones like The Drowning Pool, The Moving Target, are more kind of hard-boiled, just detective stories. But as the books progress, they become more like psychological thrillers. But I mean, I just I read any of them. They're all great. Lily Darbell asks, what is your favorite non-crime book? And which author would you most like to meet? My favorite non-crime novel and although it does kind of have crime in it, is American Pastoral by Philip Roth, which I think is just an absolutely stunning novel. I came very late to Philip Roth. I hadn't read him in younger years, you know, you know, when I was younger. And I think I read that, I think I discovered Philip Roth about 10, 11 years ago. And I read American Pastoral and I just was, you know, I was just completely blown away by that book. It was just absolutely amazing. And so um, I would, that would be the one. That's the one that would come to mind immediately. And as for which writer I would like to meet, well, I got, I mean, the writer I most wanted to meet was uh, Stephen King, and I got to meet him two years ago. So, I mean, I don't have to meet anybody else. I'm done. Sorted. It's all done. <laughs> um, Sophie Paint asks, which book, would, which of your books would you recommend to a new reader, new to the book? Well, I guess a good place to start might be, I don't think it matters a lot, but I mean, I think maybe a good starting place for anyone is, is No Time for Goodbye, 
There's No Time for Goodbye was the book that really kind of broke me out. It was my first huge hit. It was a massive hit in the in here in the UK. And uh, and I mean, a lot of people read that because of that book, they've gone on and read all the others. So I mean, that might be as good a starting point as any. Sam Eads asks, how much bacon is too much bacon? I'm not sure that you can really have too much bacon. Um, while I was on the book tour and you're on, you know, you go to different restaurants every morning and they always offered, there's always, especially if it's a buffet, there's always the big silver heated tray that's filled with bacon. And if they had nothing else, if there was no fruit, if there was no buns, if there were no eggs, and if all they had was bacon, I think that I would be okay. It was, um, and there was one day where I didn't have bacon in the morning and it looked like it was going to be a baconless day on the tour. And then got to the airport and they had these little, what they called bacon softies, which was bacon in a soft bun. So I had one of those. So that avoided a catastrophe of a non-bacon day. So I would say that it's really, it's kind of like, it's bacon's like money. You just can never have too much. No, thank you so much. That's absolutely wonderful. Is there anything you'd like to say? To I, it's been just a pleasure. This has been just the most amazing tour I've ever done. I've been I've been in so many places. I can't. I'm not even sure where I am now, and it's been just a wonderful tour. I've met so many people who've enjoyed the books and been able to meet them face to face, and so it's been just amazing. And uh, I hope that everyone will have you all have me back before too long. Thank you so much. Thanks.